So, hey guys, um, I do believe, I do believe it is April, is it April 11th today? I do think it is April 11th today, though, as I always say, I could be wrong, I could be wrong. But anyways, theoretically, it is April 11th Sunday, and uh, it's a pretty nice day today. It's again, when I talk about the whole Maryland weather thing, the thing to realize is it goes from being really, really, really nice and warm to really, really cold and snowy back to being not so bad. So, uh, so we literally, we had like, uh, we had ice and snow like yesterday and this morning there was ice everywhere. Um, and even all the way up to about noon, there was actually ice and sleet on the ground. Uh, but now it's about 55 degrees and it's pretty sunny and it's pretty nice. So, you know, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Um, as far as the geek diet thing has been going, Oh, we're not even going to do the weigh-in today. Or well, we did the weigh-in. I don't know. It's like 201. I don't know. I don't know. Exercise is going well. Exercise is going well. Well, this morning, um, I overslept. Because uh, for whatever reason, I couldn't go to sleep last night. So I didn't get to bed till like after midnight. So normally, normally I go to bed at about 9. And for whatever reason, I was just really awake last night. So I didn't get to bed till like 12.30. So uh, definitely had zero interest in waking up at uh, 5 o'clock this morning to go and do exercise. So I didn't do the elliptical uh, today. But I did do the, um, I just got done doing an hour's worth of strength training. Training. So again, as far as exercise and all that is concerned, I feel pretty good. I really do feel good. It's not just like, oh, I'm not losing any weight and I feel like a slob. Um, I feel like I'm getting in shape. I feel a lot better. Like I say, I feel my muscles. I definitely feel things going on, but the weight isn't quite going the way that I expected. But oh well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, otherwise, today we went out and we did uh, some some uh, some um, uh, more shopping for the Thailand trip. So Thailand's coming up like real damn quick, actually. So uh, so April 11th, right? Theoretically, theoretically it's April 11th today. And so if it's April 11th today and we leave, I think it's 26th. It's Tuesday. Whatever the hell Tuesday is, like the 26th. So we've literally got like two weeks left to go. So uh, so yeah, we went out today, went to REI, of course. REI, the place to go. The Whole Foods of outdoor, uh, outdoor stuff. Uh, and basically we went out there and I bought socks today. Yes, I bought some socks. Uh, and bought some other like little things there. My wife had to buy some shoes uh, and a couple of other little things. It was weird though. You know, talk about like getting older or whatever. And it's one thing like a lot of young folks can't, can't really quite grasp is uh, I was going through my equipment today, like trying to figure out what to buy and what not to buy. And I found my old Tevas. Um, I don't know, do they still make Tevas? Are Tevas still popular? So like back in like 2003 or whatever, Tevas were like a really cool thing. They're basically the, uh, like the athletic sandals. So for whatever reason, people decided they wanted to go run through the mountains in sandals. Um, I never really did that, but I did find it was good for traveling through Asia, like having sandals on instead of a closed toe shoes. So I went through and I found my sandals. And again, I do have to say on the whole age thing, it is really weird to be looking at something like sandals that are still perfectly fine. So I will still travel with these sandals and realize like those sandals are literally 12 years old. You're just looking at those sandals and you're like, I should not, I should not have footwear that is 12 years old. I just think that is wrong. So again, another one of those things, the age thing. It's just weird to think about. It's like I say, you look at this equipment and you're like, wow. Like some of, it's like literally some of the adventure equipment that I have is literally older than the viewers that I have on my Eli the Computer Guy main channel. And that is just kind of a weird concept. But anyways, went to REI and uh, bought some more stuff. And so we are getting ready. I am happy to say, I think the, uh, I think I'm, we're not gonna have to take a lot of stuff on this trip. Um, I'm not really quite sure. I, I haven't gotten everything down for the packing list, but I think I think this time, like the amount of stuff that I pack for this trip might be really really small. Cause I'll have like, I have like three shirts, I have one pair of shorts, one pair of pants, three socks, a pair of sandals, a pair of shoes, a jacket, an umbrella, and maybe a couple of other things. But literally, literally, the entire month's worth of travel stuff. Going to Thailand, I might be able to shove that in something only about the size of somebody's uh, school backpack. And that's a very nice thing. Because again, back in the day when I started backpacking, I had the huge backpack and I put everything in there, including the kitchen sink. Like when I started backpacking through Europe, like literally my pack was so heavy. Like in the beginning, like literally I had, I had to start gaining the strength to put it on. Like initially I'd have to pick it up 
and then I have to kind of like pivot my entire body to get enough momentum going in order to get it on my back. It was like so heavy because it was like, I don't know, it was like a 50 or 60 pound pack. And so it is funny, like as time goes by, I go from having a 50 or 60 pound pack down to having, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like whatever, uh, whatever this little, little five or 10 pound pack will be. But it'll actually be kind of cool because like, um, it's amazing like how, how, how small things are nowadays because I'll be able to fit all the shirts and all that in there and then I plan to use the GoPro so I'm using a GoPro now as my video camera so I'll use my GoPro and I have an old MacBook Air so like even with like video equipment and all that it's still gonna be incredibly small and then I'll probably bring my Kindle or maybe a normal book but like it's really amazing it's really amazing that you can fit so much crap and almost nothing anymore again one of those just random things to be thinking about Really true. But anyway, since we're here, I'm gonna go over here. This is our little uh, this is our little water pump. So as you can see, as you can see, the water is very green. So in the beginning of this video, you should have seen the the uh, where I put the uh, the GoPro into the water uh, to videotape the fish as they went to eat. And as you could see, I, I thought there was gonna be a lot more visibility under the water. I thought, hey, if I put the camera under the water, that um, there'll be a lot more visibility. But as you could see in that video, there's not a lot of visibility. And so we have the pump on. And so this pump here has to pump all the water. Well, this is not, not a pump, it's a filter. This is the filter. So this filter has to filter all this water. So we have that on and I figure, I figure for a little filter like this, oh, uh, let's see, it'll probably take, I'm guessing like two weeks. If it's on 24 hours a day for two weeks, I think it might actually clear all this stuff up. There's an amazing amount of water in here. So what I'm gonna do now actually is the pond is actually too full. If you look at it, you can see it's very, very full and I don't want it to be so full. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna come over here and we're actually gonna start pumping out the pond. So I just go to here, maybe this, and now the water starts going from the pond out there. Now you may think that seems crazy and wild. You're like, Eli, Eli, you're pumping all the water out of your pond. Um, but I've actually been doing this for quite a while. So this is the second time I've done this today. And uh, when I did it a couple of hours ago, I was pumping water out of the pond for like an hour. I was pumping po water out of the pond for an hour. And theoretically, the pump, uh, the pump is down here somewhere. Where is the pump? The pump is there. I don't know if you can see it, but the pump is there. Uh, but that pump is theoretically a 3,000 gallon per hour pump. So I already pumped this out for at least one hour, which would theoretically be about 3,000 gallon. They say it's a 3,000 gallon an hour pump. And, and it's, it's barely down at all. It is barely down at all. So I'm not really sure I was going with that. But it's amazing how much water is in something. And this is one of the things, like, to think about in life, how you can underestimate things. Because if you look at this, I don't know. I mean, like, how many gallons of water do you think would be in something like this? I don't know. I would think, like, 3,000 gallons. I don't know. I guess I really don't know. Like, what, what is a gallon? A gallon is, like, a square foot. A volume. The volume of a gallon of water should be somewhere around a square foot, I think it is. So would you think... So this is multiple 3,000. This is, like... Is this like 300? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but that's a random thing. Like random things in life where you think about it and you're like, you know what? I would have never thought that there was more than 3,000 gallons of water in this pond, but apparently there is. I don't, I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh, exercising at night. Exercising really just kind of drains your brain. I do have to say that. But, but as I said before, I do want to try to do this vlogging everyday thing. I think the vlogging everyday thing is a good way to go. So come hell or high water or just being very tired, I'll come here and I'll try to vlog for you guys. But the main topic that I wanted to talk about today, the main topic actually, is safe experimentation. Um, because I think this is a, a valuable thing, a valuable concept uh, that most people do not take advantage of. Now, being a technology professional, this is kind of built into our profession. So in our profession, as technology professionals, basically the concept of experimentation and the concept of, of, of playing and experimenting and testing things out in a lab environment is a very normal thing. So whenever you're dealing with a technology professional, professional, they most likely have some kind of computer lab. Now, depending on how successful they are and how old they are, uh, it will depend on how impressed
impressive that lab is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if it's a 16 year old, his, the lab is probably, you know, uh, three or four 10 year old computers that are all kind of networked together with some piece of crap Netgear hub. Um, and if you're an older technology professional, you've got racks and everything else that you could possibly want. But the thing is in the technology world, we get very used to the idea of having labs and experimenting with things. And this is something that I see that not, uh, not enough people do. And the problem that I see is that most people try to go out and they try to do things for the first time when they actually matter. Right. So they go out there and let's say they get promoted to be a boss. They get promoted to management. They get promoted to a leadership position. Now, here's the thing. The problem is, is that the first time that they've ever been in a leadership position is when they get promoted. So they have just now gotten promoted to a leadership position and now they've got quotas and they've got rules and they've got all these things to deal with um, and they've never actually done leadership or management before. Or they go out to do a, a project for a client. You say that you're gonna install a digital surveillance system or you're going to install something or build something for a client. Uh, the problem is you've literally never done it before. Uh, so you've sat there and you, you've, you've looked and you've read up on it, but you haven't actually tried to see what the issues are and there's always going to be weird issues out out there. So what I would argue for a lot of people is that you should get used to to the idea of playing with things and experimenting with things far more than you do. So back when I ran my consulting company, one of the reasons why I have so much equipment that I ran, that I ended up giving to the Baltimore Robotics Center is because I would buy a lot of equipment um, that would actually never end up going into the field. So when I wanted to, uh, when we decided to start installing surveillance systems uh, for my company, basically I went out there and I bought bought multiple different surveillance systems. I bought, I bought what are called DVR cards, I bought DVRs, I bought NVRs, I bought cameras, I bought all this stuff and basically sat there and played with all of these things to figure out what my company should, uh, should focus on, right? And so we focused on uh, the specific ones that we focused on. Um, but that means that there was a lot of equipment there that, uh, that, that basically ended up uh, collecting dust. Now, a lot of people think, oh, but I don't want to buy equipment that will never get used. Uh, but that's how uh, you're able to uh, charge a lot of money, right? So if you go out there and you, if you play and if you experiment and you figure out exactly what the client needs, exactly what the customer needs, basically you can go and you can sell something to the customer and the client and you know how it'll go. You know uh, all the quirks and the problems and you'll be able to sell it very easily. Uh, it's a lot easier to get money out of the client, right? So if you can just go up to the client and say, hey, I know I can install this. I know I can do this. It will be absolutely no problem. Um, and it is, isn't it better uh, to, to be going to the client and be playing around and to be installing things uh, when you're not having to figure things out on your own? So this is one thing that I want you guys to be thinking about in life is how you can experiment more, how you can play more. So, so with me, like back in the old days, back in my 20s, um, I did a lot of volunteership type stuff. So volunteership type stuff is back when I did like search and rescue. I did some, some volunteer search and rescue emergency services things. Um, I, but I also did other things. I, I volunteered at soup kitchens. I volunteered in the kinetic art race. Um, that was kind of interesting. I did all this weird volunteer stuff. And one of the reasons why I did all the volunteer stuff was because it allowed me to get experience um, when it didn't matter, right? So if I'm volunteering my time, I go out there and I volunteer my time to do something, right? And it goes completely cockeyed. It just goes wrong, completely wrong. Wrong in every possible way that it could go wrong. Guess what? It doesn't really matter. Now maybe, maybe it's bad for my ego. Maybe it makes me feel a little sad and all that, but the reality is, is these people aren't paying any money, right? And if there's not paying any money, realistically, generally, there's not a lot of liability there. So if you go out there and you're doing something, like say in a volunteer or internship or whatever way, and it doesn't go right and you're not getting paid, then it's not really that big a deal. You can learn your lesson and go on. Whereas if you go out there and you're doing things um, and you're actually getting paid for it, you're working for a company and it goes cockeyed, then you can run into lots and lots and lots and lots of problems. So wouldn't you rather learn to do something when you have more time to do it, when there is less stress to do it, and when uh, they're, they're, the consequences aren't very high? And this is one, this is what I, I would say a lot of you folks should be thinking about. So like with today, right? So, uh, or today in the last couple of days, I've been playing around with this GoPro um, and I've been experimenting with the GoPro. So I've been, I've been doing this with the GoPro and that with the GoPro and doing all these other wacky things with the GoPro. Um, 
And as I've talked about is because I would like to be able to do videotape and I'll be able to like to do this vlog thing, this failed normal thing when my wife and I go to Thailand. Well, here's the thing. Once my wife and I get on a plane to go to Thailand, um, I have no idea um, what we'll really be running into. As in, I don't know, like once I get there, will I be able to buy new equipment? Um, I don't know, you know, basically be able to buy things, get a hold of things, that kind of stuff. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to play with my gear here while I'm in the United States, here while I'm at home, and make sure I understand how things are supposed to work. You know, how when I do something like that, does that actually look good? Is a, is a GoPro the, the appropriate uh, tool I should be using for doing one of these vlogs? Uh, or is this a rather bad idea? And the problem that I see is a lot of people, like they'll decide that they want to do vlogging or whatever. They decide, I want to go travel around the world and I want to vlog. Uh, but they won't start vlogging, they won't start doing the work until they're actually traveling. But the thing is, by the time you're traveling, uh, you, may, you may find out you need something and you can't obtain that thing once you're on the road. So like, like playing with this. So I'm playing with this get up, I'm playing with this little tripod thing here, I'm playing with a MacBook Air, I'm doing all the upload, I'm going through all the processes. So if I run into any issues, if I run into any problems, um, I can very easily, like literally just run to Best, Best Buy um, and find a solution to the problem. Right? As I talked about, I talked about that I think uh, yesterday or whatever. Like I'm, I'm, I'm playing around with the GoPro and all that. And the nice part with it being here, being at home, is if this GoPro doesn't work out, like literally, I can just go to Best Buy and buy something else. <laughs> I can even go to, like, was it B&H or whatever? I can even have something shipped in overnight, right? Um, because I have all of those resources here that are available. Once I actually hit the road, once I'm out traveling, those resources will no longer be available, or at least they won't be, uh, won't be so easy to get to. And so one of the things I want you guys to be thinking about is how you can experiment, how you can play, how you guys can do things um, in environments that are safe so that you can learn the problems, you can learn the issues, you can figure out the solutions when it doesn't matter. Again, like I say, for, uh, for being computer people, there's something called Active Directory, right? So Active Directory is basically a security services uh, for when you've got Windows computers. Well, here's the thing. You never want to, you never want the first time you've ever set up Active Directory to be uh, when you're actually in a real, what's called a production environment, right? So you do not want the first time that you've ever set up Active Directory to be when you walk into a client's office and set it up for the first time. What you want to do is you want to create your own nice little computer lab, and then you want to set up Active Directory for your nice little computer lab. And then you want to figure out all the problems because the first time you do it, there's going to be problems. And then once you've done it the first time, then what you're going to do is you're going to wipe out all your work. And then you're going to do it the second time. And then after you do it the second time, then what you're going to do is you're going to wipe out all your work again. And then you're going to do it the third time. And then you're going to wipe out your work again. And then you're going to do it a fourth time. And you're going to keep doing it. You're going to keep doing it all the way up until you know that you have it down pat, that you, ha that you know that it's easy, 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 easy. There are going to be absolutely no issues that you're gonna run into, right? And that's what computer people do. That's what technology people do, or at least technology people that are worth a damn. Um, and so how this translates into non-technology fields is again, like I say, with uh, if you want to go into management or if you want to go into leadership positions, um, instead of simply going out there and trying to get hired for a leadership position when, you're, when your salary is going to depend on it, go out there and try to find volunteer leadership positions. So let's say there's an event. Um, so every area in the country has different events that go on. Again, like I say, I volunteer for the kinetic uh, sculpture race years ago. So can I sculpture race or this or that or the other thing and then ask and say, hey, can I, can I have some kind of leadership position? I will be the leader of um, the, the food vendors, or I'll be the leader of, of getting sponsors, or I'll be the leader of this, that, or the other thing. Um, and you go there, and you do it, and you work really hard. Just because you're doing it for free doesn't mean you don't work really hard doing it. Um, and then you find out the problems, right? You find, out, you find out the things that you're good at, you find out the things that you have issues with, um, and then you go from there. And then you volunteer for another position. And then you do it again, and then you volunteer for another position, and you do it again, and then you volunteer for another position, and then you do it again, and you volunteer for the fifth time and then you're like hey I have this down pat you know what I am a good leader of human beings and then you go and you get hired somewhere and then everything goes smooth right 
that's the thing is, is so many people nowadays, they don't want to do anything unless they're getting paid for it. It's like, if I'm not getting paid for it, I won't do it. Well, here's the thing. Um, remember, bosses and employers and all that, they don't want to pay you simply for showing up. They don't want to pay you simply because you showed up to work. They want to pay you for solving problems. So if they hire you to do something and you simply show up to work, but you keep screwing things up because it's the first time you've ever done it, people aren't going to be happy. Whereas if they hire you to do something and you walk in and everything just goes butter smooth because you're actually experienced at it, that's where things go well. But this, this is the type of thing that you guys should be thinking about. Like I say, experimenting, playing, doing stuff. Because um, I see that a lot, like I say, in the modern world. Like playing and experimenting and all that is just something that's kind of seen as de classe anymore. Oh, you want me to do all of this work when I don't see any, any direct benefit for it. And it's like, yeah, but, but you're 20. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, like you got to get exper experience somehow. Um, and people are going to pay you for experience. So if you're just kind of sitting there on your ass waiting for somebody to pay you to do something, I don't really see how that's going to go well for you. Or again, as I say, on the other hand, uh, if you're going out there and you're, you're going to be trying to do anything in life, if you're, if you're waiting to only do the work when it's actual paying work, the problem is, is you're just going to run into a whole bunch of weird issues. Like I say, like even with this GoPro, I've run into weird issues. Like I had to update the firmware, right? Uh, again, not a horrible, tedious process since I'm here and I've got my Fios fiber optic internet. But in order to use my uh, my GoPro, I had to update the firmware for it, and that took a took a bit of time. Uh, and then beyond doing the firmware thing, I had to play with this. I had to play with the other thing. I had to play with all these the, these weird little issues. And those those were those were quirks I had to figure out. Um, last year, so I've actually been playing with these GoPros for like a year now. So I was playing with these GoPros last year, um, and then they didn't work for what I wanted to do with the GoPros. So, so I didn't bring them with me on the trip. But one of the one of the weird things that I found out about the GoPro last year is that the case that they give for the and this is the things that, that you find out when you're playing the 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 case the default case. So when you buy a GoPro, basically you get a camera, and then there's a case that goes around the camera, and then there's all these accessories, right? Well, the case that they give you. Um, for the uh, for the GoPro, one of the problems with it is it has really really poor audio quality. So there's there's a there's a microphone on the GoPro somewhere, no, somewhere around there. Uh, the, there's a microphone on the GoPro, and the problem is 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 like the default case that they give you for the GoPro, um, it doesn't allow you to hear the microphone very well. Um, and so by playing with the GoPro and figuring out what's going on with the GoPro, what I found out is I had to go out and spend another twenty dollars to buy an appropriate case for the GoPro. Now, yes, I can bitch, whine, moan, and complain that they didn't give me the appropriate case for the GoPro when I bought it, but at least by playing with it, I knew that, right? Can you imagine if I left the GoPro in the box? It was like, I have a GoPro. How are you going to record videos, Eli? I have a GoPro. It's solved. And imagine if I just left the GoPro in the box until I went on the trip, and then I didn't find out all these weird little issues and problems until I was actually traveling, right? So that's what you do. You take things out, you play with them, all that kind of thing. And now I know, again, like I say, a lot of people complain because of the cost. Like, Eli, Eli, you don't understand the cost. These things cost money, right? Well, again, what I, what I would talk about in, in, in the modern world and in a normal life is any kind of education is going to cost money. Um, right, and this this isn't too shocking, right? If you want to go out and get a certification, it's going to cost money. Uh, if you're going to go out and get a college degree, it's going to cost money. So any kind of education is going to cost money. But for some reason, people feel like if they quote unquote like self-study, like it shouldn't cost them any money at all. And so what I would argue, like with going out there and playing with things, is you should just be willing to spend money. So I spend money again, like I say, on cameras. I spend money on equipment. Uh, sometimes uh, it's equipment that goes into my normal toolkit uh, and then other times is equipment that basically goes and collects dust but the way that I look at it is that it's education um, I had an instructor way back when so way back uh, back when the MCSEs were brand new things Microsoft uh, certified systems engineer was a brand new cool certification 
And I remember um, I was in an electronic crime class, actually, because I was still in college. And so the instructor was talking about, um, you know, what you, what you should pay for. And so people were asking, you know, back then, like, A+, pl a plus was the certification. And it was like, you know, should we pay, like, $3,000 to go through this A-plus certification course? Um, and what the instructor said is for, like, the A-plus and any kind of IT certification, most IT certifications, you don't actually have to go through an official course. It's basically just a certification test. You pass a certification test and then you get the certification. Now most people go through a course because if you have like a if you have a course that somebody else set up, it just makes it easier to get to, to go through. But basically what this guy said, what he argued, it was like because at the time the A plus cost like three thousand dollars. So it was like three thousand dollars for an A plus course. And he said, look, you can either go pay somebody for an A plus course, they're basically going to sit there and read a book at you and you're gonna play with their computer lab uh, and you may or may not pass the test. Or for like $1,500, you can go buy two or three of your own computers, actually build your own computer lab, buy two of the self-study books, um, and be able to figure it out on your own. Which would you rather have at the end of the day? And then at the end of it, then you've actually got your own little computer lab, so then you can start studying for your CCNA, CCNA and all the other certifications, right? And so that's one thing to be thinking about too, like with the experimentation and stuff, is people just don't want to pay any money anymore. They're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to pay money for anything. And what I would argue is, is that basically paying money for this kind of stuff is simply, it's, it's simply education. Right? You know, you pay money uh, to figure something out. So, so like when I was doing uh, the digital surveillance system, so digital surveillance systems were high profit products uh, back in the day, right? Um, and so that's what I looked at. It is, is there were no certifications at the time, uh, no specific certifications. So basically when I went out there and I bought five or six different entire digital surveillance systems basically out of my pocket, I simply looked at that as, as an education. I was learning how digital surveillance systems worked, right? And again, you get a lot of people, oh, I'm not going to spend money on it. And it's like, well, then how are you going to be successful? Because you're not going to be successful without experience. Ex experience is what's required for everything, whether you're going to be installing surveillance systems or whether you're going to be vlogging. Um, you have to get experience. You have to figure out how this stuff works. So even like me, like right now, I'm figuring out how this works with a GoPro. So I've got my weird little tripod thing. I'm now talking into this little camera. There's all this stuff going on. And talking into a GoPro is different. It really is different than talking into a normal camcorder. Because when I have a normal camcorder, I've got a little screen on the side. So normally there's the camera and then there's a screen on the side. So I can look at the screen on the side to know what the camera's looking at. And so when I have a GoPro, there is no screen on the side. So I kind of have to just assume what I understand, what I, what I think the GoPro is seeing. Um, and that's a skill. That's something that I have to learn. So again, wouldn't I rather learn that while I'm here? And basically, I'm just showing you pictures of, of me pumping out my, my pond rather tr than trying to figure that out while I'm in Thailand, like looking at some like just, just some of the most beautiful, beautiful scenery in the entire universe. Right. If I screw up here, if I screw up here, it's no big deal. If I screw up the video or the audio or anything like that, it's like, oh well, I lost video and audio of me walking around my house. Whereas if I screw it up when I'm in Thailand, I mean like, oh my God, like, like we get to a Utia, hopefully we'll get to a Utia and we'll get to, like I say, Chiang Mai and Bangkok and all that, I'd be like, wow, right? And I, I don't wanna be experimenting. I don't wanna be learning how this works while I'm sitting just in like, like I say, some of the most amazing places on the entire planet. I don't know. Oh, I hope all that made sense. I hope that made sense. It's so weird. It's so weird, like, how, how I do these videos. It's kind of like this whole train of thought thing where, where I just kind of, like, follow the thoughts that are in my head and basically kind of talk um, as the thoughts are running through my head, which means that it's very easy for me to talk. That's why I can sit here and I can talk for, for an hour or two hours or three hours at a time. But the problem is, is, like, I can't actually keep track of what I'm saying. I know that probably sounds really weird, but like the way that I do this vlogging is I think about, I was talking about it like the other day to somebody and it's such a bizarre way of thinking. And again, like the random, the random, the random skills you need for whatever profession you have. But like the reason that I'm able to do the, these one take videos is because I literally think in a different way. I almost think in a very computer way, right? So I think about, I think about what I plan to say, I think about what the overall tone of the communication I want to be is, right? And then I think about 
Oh, then I think about what the next thing that I want to say is. I kind of like queue up like the next two or three things I want to say. So as I'm talking to you about something right now, as I'm talking to you now, I'm queuing up in my head the next thing that I plan to talk about. And then I'm kind of like almost queuing like the third thing out. So I'm kind of thinking about like three things out. But as I think about three things out, um, I also try to keep an index of the stuff that I've talked about before. So I don't really remember what I talked about before like like even in this video like it's now I can see I'm 30 30 minutes and two seconds in and I actually literally don't remember don't fully remember what I've talked about in this video even though it is me talking in this video I kind of have like these weird indexes um, the way that I think of it, it's kind of like an index on a uh, in a computer system where there's kind of like a pointer to things I've talked about in the past so there's like a title so I have all these like titles of stuff that I remember the titles of the things that I've talked about in this video, but I don't fully remember exactly what it is I've talked about in this video and why all this really matters. So like sometimes, like when I'm talking to you guys doing these videos, I do really wonder, like do the things that I say make sense? And it is a weird thing. It is really weird for me because you don't know how many times like I will get done with a video I'll get done talking like an hour into a video and I'll do an, a, a, a video that'll be like an hour long and then I'll get to the end of it and I'll just think, wow, that was just complete and utter trash. That is complete and utter garbage. I'm going to go, I'm going to watch a couple of minutes of it and then I'm just going to delete the video. Um, and then it's weird because then I'll go and watch the video and they'll be like, oh, wow, that was actually a good video. That really actually made sense there. But that's the thing. I never really know if I make sense. So I'm just sitting here talking into this video camera, and to my, to me, it's uh, the whole thing. I'm like, huh? I just said a whole bunch of words, but I wonder if those words make sense to the person on the other side. And I really don't know. I really don't know. So you'll have to tell me if this whole safe experimentation thing, if you guys, if you guys, uh, if that makes sense to you guys. But, um, but yeah, I really would say, like I say, is to think about how you guys can go out there and experiment. Like I say, for, uh, for technology professionals, it's going out there and dealing with uh, having our little computer labs. Or, I mean, like even in the real world though, like one of the reasons I like to do backpacking, especially when I was young, one of the greatest things about like backpacking and traveling the world when you're young is that you can experiment on people that you will never see again. Now I know that sounds horrible. I know that sounds horrible. Maybe it is horrible, but it's great. Like you can go to like, like especially if you're trying to figure out like the whole, like the whole male female thing, like, like picking up girls or any of that kind of stuff. One of the greatest things about like backpacking and traveling through Europe is you can just hop on a train and like every night you can be in a different place. So like when you're home, when you're home and you're experimenting, and you're figuring things out with people uh the problem is is the people that you're dealing with you'll most likely have to deal with them tomorrow and the next day and the day after and a few years from now right so if you say something really stupid to somebody uh they they there's a good chance that they'll bring it up 10 years from now um, and so that doesn't make you want to experiment. Like when you're trying to figure out how to deal with people and how to talk with people and all that kind of stuff, it's really, it, it's very difficult to experiment if you know that the person may, like I say, may actually remember this 10 years from now and still bring it up. So one of the cool things with the whole experiment deal is like if you go travel and you backpack through Europe and all that kind of thing, uh, you get the Eurorail Pass. And what was really cool with like the Eurorail Pass is you go out there and you know you get to a hostel and you meet a whole group of people and then you go out with that whole group of people and then you can actually like try on different personalities you can try on different ways of talking to people you can try on different different things like hey if i walked up to that cute girl over there and just said something whatever you want to say i wonder if that would work and here's a cool thing you can do it and you can go there and worst case scenario worst case scenario you only have to hide for a night <laughs> Even if it goes really, really, really bad, you just hide for one night and then you hop on the first train out in the morning, right? And again, it's experimenting, it's playing, it's seeing, uh, it's seeing what you can do, right? <sighs> but it's something that people don't like to do anymore. I don't know why. That's what I always taught. For me, that's the thing. Like, like I look back on what I, I was taught when I was growing up, and there was all these things, there were all these lessons as a kid from the 80s that, that we were taught. Um, but for some reason, it seems like a lot of times, like I was the only one to actually be paying attention to it. Because that's what we were told. It's like, we, we were told even back then. It's funny, like uh, like right now we have all the, with, uh, with Trump, 
leading in the polls or whatever for the Republican Party, been the, the whole arguments with globalization and all that. What's weird with the arguments about globalization, what I find really bizarre, is so I'm 39, almost 40, and these arguments about globalization have been going on since I was a kid. Like when I was in the 1980s, when I was like in elementary school and junior high school, we were, t we were being told how the manufacturing and the union jobs were dying. And then like somehow they're still dying now and super people are still shocked. It's shocking. You're like, what? This has been happening for like 40 years now. I don't know. I think I just took a, I think I took a left turn. <laughs> I think I took a left turn off of coherence. As, as I used to say on the Daily Blobs, I think I've gone from blabbering to blathering. Or is it blathering to blabbering? I forgot my own, I forgot my own phrase. Anyways. Anyways, I am tired. It's been a long day, so I'm going to go in. I'm going to eat some tofu, some tofu sandwiches. What you do, you want some good tofu sandwiches? How you make some good tofu sandwiches is you get the extra firm tofu. You get the extra firm tofu. And if you can get the Safeway sprouted tofu, that's some of the best stuff. That is incredibly firm. But when it, you go out there, you get the extra firm tofu. And then you just slice it into like nice big patties, like nice thick. And then you put oil in a pan and you fry it up. Oh, oh. You get tofu burgers out of that telling you i'm telling you. again like i say even if you're not vegan or vegetarian um uh, that's why i hate with the whole vegan vegetarian thing it all you know it creates dogma stuff and things can taste good without you being one way or the other but you go out there like i say even as a, a red-blooded american male you go out there oh you fry you fry up some tofu you throw that on a sandwich it's insane like like when i was younger like that's that's how i started doing the tofu um i actually started doing it like i say back when i was like 22 so long time ago for me um but that's what i would do is i'd go out and get hoagie rolls so get these nice big hoagie rolls and i'd fry up a slab of a uh, slab of tofu and fry it up put some nice oil in there fry it up a little salt a little pepper on there oh then what you do now again this isn't vegan then you throw cheese on top so you throw some good cheddar cheese let that melt in oh you throw that on the hoagie roll you put mayo again not vegan vegetarian throw mayo on there throw some some spinach so throw some lettuce some pickle some mustard oh Again, you, you don't have to be vegan or vegetarian to enjoy that. That is like, that's just like the manly tofu meal right there. I'm telling you, if you have not, if you have not fried up pan frying tofu, throwing it on a sandwich, you don't know. You, you just don't know what you're missing. But you do. It has to be extra firm. So, uh, so Noya or whatever, uh, there's this, it's red or super firm or whatever.